the program today. Artists gather to celebrate a living legend in the music industry with this live drawing session by a group of artists in Lagos. Then in another part of the commercial city, two artists explore different issues in this exhibition. So we're getting the best from both worlds on Art House today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Melinda Akinlami. Our wordsmith for this week is by Nifemi Williams, titled Friend of a Friend. If I were an outsider, I would have thought this bond is nothing but a lie. Thought never to align like that, even from one's twin brother. The benefit far from just understanding is a footprint on the wall of each other. Not only a breed of its own feather, can only be called brother. The price of your hearts is the quality of what you admire. Love what you like, that's not a coincidence either. When it comes to another, I pray no distance is between Louisiana and Ghana. That's a bond. That makes the snail not leave its shell. It's a question from the onset. Where have you been all this while? Scratching on the wall with no nail. Till I found a friend like no other that six more than a brother. Femi Williams, our wordsmith, is appreciating the beauty of friendship and is important to honor those making an impact in our world. That's what these group of artists are doing for a veteran in the music industry. <laughs> The music maestro Olaliko Animashon, popularly known as Babani, blows his saxophone for a different audience, artist doing a live drawing session to celebrate him as part of the 8th Living Legends series, which is tagged Fine Art Interrogating Babani, Bass Saxophonist. This is uh, the 8th edition of the Living Legend project, which started in 2008, and it is uh, honoree. Is the person of uh, Lekon Animasha, who is 85 years old, and uh, he's been celebrated for being a very consistent band uh, leader and an inspiration to a lot of young uh, uh, artists in the world of Afrobeat. We felt we must begin to document and create our own African heroes and personality, particularly those that have really done, you know, showcase their, uh, their, their, their quality in their profession, in integrity, you know, in being diligent in what they do for years, for a number of years. Now, the reason we felt we needed to do this was that we felt we needed to start creating, if you ask me, our own heroes, where are the next generation, and even this generation can emulate their way of life, what they've been able to do and achieve at the end of the day for, for the society to be better for it. <laughs> It was going to be like this. 
I was thinking of marking my birthday with my friends and members of my family. But the organizers of these uh, ceremonies, they have done a great job. And I'm very happy, very, very happy. <laughs> Age isn't slowing down this prolific instrumentalist who learned music under Chris Agillo in 1959 before sharpening his skills with the baritone saxophone percussion and piano. Then it was up from there into Afrobeat. His real name is Mr. Leko Alimashao, a legendary bass saxophonist. He started his career actually with Nigerian Broadcasting Network and of course met with the legendary fella Anikula Kokuti. And he's been with Fela for his whole life. It's been too long that we just look only at the top without seeing certain essence of what holds the roof in place. Come on, Babani. If you look at Babani, Le Animation, he personifies tolerance, patience, humility, and the height of loyalty. For a man to stay there through all the problems, travails, name it, and glory also, that is fella, and still stand after with his son and the same Egypt Etiban, there must be something special about that man. Baba Ani on record is the oldest serving band leader in the world. His name resonates a lot, um, both in character and in person. And he's been so wonderful. Uh, we chose him because uh, in that genre, in the world of music, Afrobeat is frontline. And you can't talk about the music without talking about the band. And we thought it's important we also immortalize him in the Hall of Fame of the living legend while he's still alive. And the frontline artists are going to immortalize him and induct him into the body of art for eternity. When you talk of Nigerian art, especially the uh, musical aspect of it, you cannot write that history without Baba, because he was there at the beginning. Uh, his contribution to creating what is known today as the Afrobeat cannot be underestimated. And uh, since I was there at the very beginning, I was a regular visitor to the shrine, the original shrine. It became an honor for me to, to have been invited, not just invited, but to host the event. And, uh, and that means a lot, not just to me, but to the museum. Drawing is the foundation of art, and these creatives interpret the way they see him, even though he's moved from his standing position and continues entertaining them from this chair. It's always uh, the process, having a life encounter with the legend, that will enable you and afford you an opportunity to share the same space and encounter the legend in that particular moment in time. The magic of uh, coming in contact with him and doing a life study of the subject. And that is very, very key to this project because it's a first-hand experience. Haven't heard so much. And in that process, the artist has the time to interact and interrogate the subject and get a feel of the subject and immerse himself in it and they exchange there's a conversation and a dialogue, seen and unseen, when both uh, parties meet and they, that is recorded on paper or on canvas. Since art is uh, multi-dimensional 
And uh, when you talk about art, drawing is foundational. And uh, today's experience is very unique in, on the, in the sense that uh, what we are doing is not common. Trying to document some legends and uh, not just documenting them theoretically now, but uh, documenting them in drawing. Drawing them, compiling those drawings, then speaking to the drawings. And uh, it's a very unique uh, and novel uh, uh, practice that uh, is being built by uh, Olu Ajayi. This live drawing session of Babani, hosted by Uluajai Studios, is the beginning of several events lined up to honor this living legend at 85. It's nice to see creators gathered to honor a man who has made an indelible mark in the music industry and to see Babani still playing his instrument. Amazing, I tell you, truly an inspiration for the younger generation. And these are the works of art you sent this week. Let's begin with Lucas Kumba's work called Hakuna Matata, which means no worries. It's done with mixed media. Then Felix Ifula has Indigo rhythms done with acrylic on canvas. Elayo Ashi is looking at the merry man with this pen work. Then Belo Adilani is talking about the importance of self-love with this thread on needle painting. While T. Dearest Sam says we should just bask in the moment with Basking in the Moment 1, the first in the series, done with acrylic on canvas. Qualifying Emmanuel is looking at the strength of a woman with this leaf art. This fiberglass and metal piece is called Broken Spirit by Richard Joshua. While Awoshika Uluwabamishi is talking about the importance of vision for this mixed media work. Then from the Affection Series 4 comes You and I, done by Tosi Uyeni with Lino Cut on canvas. Then The Vows is a hand-painted digital art done by Tomiwa Adelagun. And with that, we wrap up the works of art you sent in this week. We do encourage you to keep them coming. Let's take a moment now on the program. When Art House returns, we see an exhibition by two artists at the Co Gallery in Lagos. Stay with us. Any artist worth his salt must know the foundation of art, which is drawing.
Call it a two-in-one show taking place at the Co Gallery in Lagos, a unique type of exhibition where the artists showcasing their pieces are exploring different topics. Take a look. Two artists display their latest work at the KO Gallery, but unlike most exhibitions by a duo, they're exploring different issues and bear separate themes while sharing the spotlight. Usaya Lawal looks at life in asymmetry. One of the works in this show is uh, The Surge. The Surge is a work that really talks about the recent development that we are all experiencing. The color combination in the works, I use much red and also I use black. And when you look at the works, there's a kind of combining forces. You see lines. I employ the use of lines in my work. I appropriated it from design, from the tapestry, and also the embroidery, traditional embroidery works that is even synonymous with the Yoruba people. And you see network of lines coming together. So appropriating this line to tell how we are being bombarded with information, we have been bombarded with news. In recent time, the development that we are all witnessing to motor's information that the surge, what we are seeing today, the work tells the story. It tells our experience and it tells the situation we have. Busayo Lawa, who is, the, who is, I'd say, in maybe early to mid-career artist, mid-career artist, depending on how you want to judge that, and has been living and working in Lagos for over 20 years now. His exhibition is so, his, daily, his works mainly are primarily abstractions, but, but to an extent brings in figurative elements into it. And they are based on, or rather inspired by Ashoke, the patterns of Ashoke textiles, the woven cloth that's traditional to Yorubas, in Nigeria and elsewhere in the diaspora. Then, Ifri Madegoke calls his solo collection The Age of Dreams. The Age of Dreams is centered on um, the life of young people, youth of Nigeria and Africa as general. It's, 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 a, it's like a, a point of convergence, so, which is it's the purpose of the exhibition is to celebrate you know, young people who are pursuing their dreams, who are trying all their best, even though they are provided with little opportunities, living in a laborious terrain you know, with limited opportunities, no funds, no money. They are trying all they have you know, with, with all the story of deterioration, they're trying their much best to achieve their dreams and put everything in place all together. He's a very young artist. And uh, for me, that's a plus. Being young is um, uh, a potential for um, longevity in the art world. And young people have a lot of energy. So for someone, um, of his age demographic, you know, stepping out this boldly to have an exhibition at this stage, to this point, I think is something that needs to be encouraged. Most of the works of art displayed are on large canvas, painted with colors that pop. But you can tell who has what, as the artists adopt different styles and techniques in executing their pieces. The works in this exhibition addresses the issue of power, migration, time, space, continuum. In my work, I employ the use of abstract concepts and also the use of the gorgeous Yoruba traditional cloth, Ashoke, tapestry. I employ visual language embedded in these works. I employ the use of abstract elements, components, pattern design geometry in this age-long clothing tradition. 
to produce works that are engaging. Talking about our own collective experience, the way we are, where we are, telling my own story and also a collective story that belongs to us. In his body of work titled Life in a Symmetry, he has at least on, 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 on show here in the gallery has at least four distinct different bodies of work or series of works. So he has the large scale abstract drawings, I mean, abstract, abstract paintings, and he has the large scale figurative paintings, but they are not purely figurative. My, my, my compromise for uh, what he does is um, to call it figural abstract. It's a borrowed term and um, you, tell, you insist on what it means. But simply just indicating that some works are a mixture of the figurative and the abstract. All he does is just employ maybe just the, the silhouette of a figure, but then everything else in between and outside it, his color compositions, what he's doing with light, is completely abstracted. His works are so impressive and he makes use of lines using the actual the tapestry to create the form, the artworks, and there's harmony in those lines when they come together. There's a sort of uh, harmony in the structure. So the lines go round and meet at a particular point. But you cannot really get where the line meets, but you just see the lines flowing. So it shows, it makes the work unique. While Lawal's life is a symmetry, is addressing the challenges of norms and conventions by taking a journey through tradition using motifs, Adegoke's art looks at beauty, gender, and identity. When you look at my work, I use, I, I portray black figures, right? I portray black figures. My sole aim of painting black figures is to promote, um, you know, the black identity, the identity of black people. Because I, based on my research, I come to realize that, you know, 40% of Africans bleach their skin, according to World Health Organization. And this is due to the issue of colorism. You know, black people aren't even proud of being black in terms of skin. I'm not painting. Yeah, we can talk about other issues of racism and all of that, but my major aim, my major purpose of painting black skin is to like appreciate the identity, confidence, self-esteem, as, as a reason, as a purpose of self-esteem. That's why I paint. No matter the story or anything I'm trying to talk about with my heart, I always paint black skin. The two solo exhibitions by these vibrant artists has been curated by Sabo Pade at KO Gallery in Lagos. There's more to expect, but that will be on the next episode of Art House. Next week on Art House. Our wordsmith has already laced interesting lines. Then the works of art you sent are exploring different issues. That and more on the next episode. Your art house experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels. We're everywhere. That's Art House today. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And just in case you missed this on television, just go to our YouTube page where all the episodes of Art House are there for your viewing pleasure. And don't forget to like and share it as well. I'm Melinda Akinlami, encouraging you to stay safe and keep being creative.